What's up, fellas? I'm getting ready to throw together this uh, drip feed waste oil burner for an individual I was talking to by the name of Steve. We had discussed um, somewhat of the dilemma of nozzles, and they are quite the dilemma. And I just wanted to showcase one of the easiest oil burners I've ever built is just these drip feed types that don't need a nozzle at all. They don't need oil pumps or nothing. The only thing that's going to be connected to this bad boy is this cord. I just wanted to show you guys what I've got going here to start off. Inside this pump here, notice that I've placed this uh, reducer to increase the air velocity. I am going to grind that solder out. I was just waiting for it to cool down. But what's going to happen is we're going to have that blower placed there. And let's see, I lost a piece. This thing here. will be mounted directly in front of that blower so it gives a Ventura effect. And on top of this goes a small propane canister. Man, I am just so unprepared here. Where is the propane canister tank? I can't imagine what I've done with it. Wow. This is the tank, basically. And that's just gonna sit here just like this. And periodically I will dump some oil in that. Now one of the cool advantages of this type of drip cup is when you first start up a waste oil burner using synthetic oil, you have to use a fuel blend. What I usually do is use a fuel blend of about four parts oil, one part gas with a total of five parts. Now you might wanna light it up yourself and test it. I usually put a little bit in a tray and light it on fire. If it seems a little too hot and explosive, I'll throw a little bit more oil in it. But the ignition run is always a very hot mix. Synthetic oil has a flash point of 405 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just not conducive to these things at all. So just wanted to show you some of the parts before we get it all put together. Basically this heavy piece of metal here will be inside of the combustor. And this right here is going to be our discharge nozzle. The purpose of this particular oil burner is for a forge. And um, I know a lot of people have asked, well, why don't you just build a propane burner? I'm going to tell you something right now. You would go through a tank of propane like that, just smelting, you know, a couple crucibles of metal. Maybe not even that much. I've never done it. But I can tell you from experience with my waste oil burners that... Uh, you're going to go through a lot of oil, so I can't imagine how expensive that would be burning up that much propane. We're talking gallons and gallons. Your typical waste oil burner will burn anywhere from 4 liters an hour to 12 liters an hour. Some of them probably do well under that, but they don't put off a very big flame under 4 liters an hour. That's about 43,000 watts or so. So we're going to check this thing out. Okay, so here is the burner nozzle. This is the burner nozzle, not the uh, oil nozzle. <laughs> Basically, I wanted that little inner shroud so that we would get a little captured flame holder right there that would kind of hopefully superheat this area a little bit. And I wanted that to be a nice big hefty piece to retain some of this combustion heat. I want to keep this nozzle nice and hot and um, hopefully transfer a lot of that heat back to this back end of the burner. I might even weld a couple of pieces of rebar to bring us back here to heat up this area. We need some, some heavier metal to transfer some heat back to this intake. You see there where it gets um, the burn pattern inside this thing is it cools off right there at the intake and you really want to get this whole canister as hot as possible because the uh, flash point of synthetic oil is so high. If you're not using synthetic, you don't got to worry about a lot of stuff. If you're having troubles building a waste oil burner and it's just not lighting and ain't burning right, it's because you're using synthetic oil most likely. If you are and you're having problems, that's why you just need to add a small amount of gas to it. They even have to do these with actual waste oil burners, guys. I'm talking about machines designed specifically to burn waste oil will not run on pure synthetic. That's one thing you have to keep in mind while you're building these things, and that's a little hidden piece of information that's very hard to come across out there. It took me months of messing with these things to learn that. 
So here it is, fellas. You want to build the simplest and most effective waste oil burner, the cheapest and the easiest way. This is the device right here. This thing has no oil pump. The only thing you need is electricity. Now, of course, you will have to run this on a triac. Um, a very easily obtainable triac is a very familiar device to a lot of us called a router speed controller. This is just a basic router speed controller that, uh, ooh, don't look like this one works. How lucky of me. But at any rate, you would control that blower motor with this. I have many videos on this thing operating, but it used a pressurized oil pump. I've also had other drip feed waste oil burners that kind of had a pulsating effect because I would drip the oil into the combustion chamber. Now I've got the idea that to get rid of that pulsating effect and to atomize the fuel a little bit better, I'm going to be using a siphon configuration there is a reducer fitting on the end of this blower and this tube is set directly in front of that blower so hopefully it gives us a real nice siphon effect the air pressure coming out of that blower is quite significant so that ought to be a pretty good burn i've already used this before as i said but i've done some modifications because of the things that i've observed during testing this big heavy bar this uh, steel stake that I've welded on here is a thermal conduit that's meant to bring heat from the front of the combustor back to the, the rear end of the device. In addition to that, I'm considering running the device with this small end port open so that a small jet flame issues out the back. That would also bring us more heat towards the back of the combustor because for the most part, it's all just traveling out the front. You can kind of see where the paint has burned away. This area right here will rarely exceed 300 degrees, believe it or not. When you get up to here, it starts to really get hot, and right here, you're glowing red. So, I did decide to add an extra beefy um, FIP. Or is this a MIP? Yeah, this is a MIP. I believe this is an inch and a half MIP. And uh, I went with a heavier metal instead of just a pipe this time, because I, as I said, I want to bring some of that combustion heat back here to help vaporize this oil and in addition to that when you're firing up any waste oil burner of any kind and it uses synthetic you have to start off with a little bit of gasoline in the mix once you get the forge up and running it really doesn't matter what you put in there it's so hot inside the forge if you spray anything in there you can spray just a straight stream you don't even need a nozzle so a lot of this nozzle business that you guys see me doing is just me tinkering around trying to um just observe different techniques of building certain atomizers and stuff because uh i have a lot of other ideas in mind i wanted to build some flash boilers and stuff like that so i was just trying to build a, a hotter bigger device and i'm starting to stray away from the atom atomizer nozzles because they're a lot of work a lot of testing they and they require a lot of machinery to run them um, in some cases you need two pumps an air pump and an oil pump Whereas this right here, all we're going to be needing is this blower. This can here is big enough that it runs at a rate you're not constantly feeling it. Besides, when you're running one of these, it's something you're constantly watching over anyway. So you would keep adding fuel to this periodically. This here is a valve that enables you to throttle the fuel. And... That is about the gist of it. This is definitely going to be the easiest build for you, Steve. If you're wanting to make a forge, brother, I, I highly recommend you stay away from them spray nozzles unless you've got a lot of equipment already, like a couple of air compressors and stuff like that. You could probably do it with one. I don't see why you couldn't. You, just, you would just need a siphon bottle. This little nozzle right here is the one I was telling you about. This little bad boy right here has a little air spike inside of there and the oil travels through that outer sheath. Nothing sophisticated about this one at all. I have a video on it. This one uses very little air, but it does not need an oil pump. So this nozzle does outdo all the other ones because it doesn't need an oil pump. It siphons. It's an actual working siphon nozzle that atomizes the fuel very well. And that's what I, I use to run this little bad boy right here. This would make a fantastic forge burner. 
in my opinion. But the reason I like these better than these spray nozzles is because you cannot adjust the air to fuel ratio as well as you can with these. I can burn a super lean uh, fuel mixture in this thing and get an almost white hot flame coming out of this thing, like a, a rocket cone. It'll almost have freaking shock cones in it. It's so beautiful. But uh, with these, you get one type of flame, and that's just about it. This here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We can probably shoot a four to five foot flame out the front of this thing. Or, at the same air power, we can have a super white hot rocket flame coming out this thing about this tall. So, pretty uh, cool feature about these things is the air, their ability to adjust air fuel ratio so well these things here are just a huge fight a huge pain in the ass it costs a lot of money and and i've built a lot of these guys so you don't have to take my word for it but let's hope you don't find out the hard way i did this is just an adventure for me these spray nozzles they're not a necessity i just wanted to try and build something simpler that could just be run off a simple air compressor hose and that's what this bad boy right here does all the other nozzles I'm working on require this oil pump that I've built, which is a uh, fairly little sophisticated build. Because I had most of the parts, it only cost me about 50 bucks, and that was the cost of the compressor. Everything else is from other videos, so that's one of the cool things about uh, doing some of these builds. I have quite a little scrap yard. At any rate, Steve-O, I am going to... Uh, fire this thing up tomorrow man and um, I'll let you know how it goes I just we will resume this process in the morning it's a little late to be ripping 110 decibels through the neighborhood but let's take a little walk around this thing and just look at it this blower by the way let me touch on that a second this blower can be obtained from a Stanley vacuum cleaner for $20. Fantastic find. This little bad boy right here at Menards or Lowe's runs you about 20 bucks. $20, you go, you take that apart, do some simple modifications. You can see I've done a little bit of soldering and some JB welding to this one. Um, yeah, with just some minor modifications, what you end up with it's a nice little blower motor with a built-in cooling fan on it. So you can't beat that for the price. Definitely liking it. Another thing you'd want to do is this right here is an ignition port. I will stick the blowtorch directly down inside of that during ignition. I would typically fill the cup about this full with some uh, very hot mix. Like almost 50-50. 50% gas, 50% oil. Once the system gets up to a little bit of heat... I'll then just start adding pure oil. No uh, gasoline whatsoever is needed once this thing's up and running. However, if you're in a scenario where you feel you want to run a little bit leaner of a burn, you can add more gas, which will change the combustion characteristics in such a way it will enable you to run a very lean, super oxygen-rich burn, which um, is probably going to benefit the forge guys. That's basically my focus on these builds is for people building forges, you guys are actually doing something with these things. You know, the, the whole concept of building these things to heat your house, in my opinion, is uh, or your garage, it is somewhat ridiculous unless you have a junkyard or a couple of oil change stations in your back pocket because I don't think you guys realize how much of this stuff you're going to be burning if you're going to use it for heat. It's just, it's gallons and it's 55-gallon drums a month. Like, seriously, it's a huge amount of oil. If that's your thing, man, I get it. You may have access to oil that I don't, but I, I'm lucky to store up 20 gallons a year, which is about 20 hours of heat. So, well, I take, that's probably about 40 hours a week with the way I burn stuff, but uh, there you have it, Steve. I told you I'd throw this thing together for you. I, it was configured completely differently. This is going to be somewhat of a test run, but I guarantee you this bad boy is going to scream. This combustion chamber is just a hair too small, but I think with this new setup, we're going to make it work. And um, this is going to be the cheapest way for you to go, I, I think, brother. 
I could be wrong. You might already have an air compressor and all that stuff. If that's the case, then um, forge on, bro. And even if your uh, Delavan nozzles or whatever they're called don't work, let me know how it goes. That's some extremely valuable information to me. It'd be even cooler if you could get it on footage or get it on video and, and download it. I would love to see your work. I'm definitely interested in failures. So any failure footage you have, it, it, to me, that's just as valuable as something that does work when you're in the design process. You know, you may have an idea similar to a guy who's showing you that it doesn't work and bam, you just saved yourself a whole day's work by watching a two, three minute video. So you guys who are brave enough to post your failures, who aren't trying to look perfect all the time, I definitely applaud you. And uh, I'm gonna shut up now. I've been yapping for like 10 minutes. So I'm gonna shut this test down. I just wanted to throw this together real quick for Steve, who's been wanting to build one of these for his forge. I didn't want him to go out and waste his money on them damn nozzles. They're wasting your money. Unless you just really want to do it, brother, I, I highly recommend you just build a simple setup like this. This thing would be awesome for the size of forge that you told me you had. There's nothing to do. This is a fire extinguisher. It's a pipe in the back of the cleaner blower. Propane thing there. It's some straight junk. Stay running. 